This was 1965. I was in Berkeley. I saw on television the terrible Bloody Sunday. Just incredible to me that in our society there should be such violence, public violence as that. I knew something was wrong and I wanted to speak up in some way, do something. The next morning, I heard on the radio Martin Luther King asking clergy to come to Selma the next day. I arrived in Montgomery, and I remember the drive across the countryside, about 55 miles. I remember seeing large billboards saying, Martin Luther King is a communist, never having been in the South before. And I knew I was in a different country, uh, as it were. I looked around and saw Jim and Orloff, and we decided, the three of us, that we would try to have dinner together. They had arrived earlier in town, so they had an orientation about how to behave, nonviolent. If someone attacks you, don't attack back. We went to the restaurant, an integrated restaurant, just for that day. When we decided to leave, Jim telephoned to his wife, Marie, to tell her that he would not be back home that night. And the three of us then started walking back to the Brown Chapel. We saw three or four men who came across the street at us. We saw that one of them was carrying a club of some kind. We whispered to each other, just keep walking. They were right behind us, and I turned and looked at them, and I sw saw one of them uh, the one next to Jim, right behind Jim Reeb, swing a club, just bang, hitting Jim on the side of his head. Orloff fell to the ground in that prayer for protection position, and I, I ran. One of the attackers ran after me and slugged me, uh, hit my face, knocked my glasses off, and then went away, and so did the others. Jim was lying there, babbling, incoherent, and he squeezed my hand tighter and tighter, and then I felt his hand go limp, and he went unconscious. He never recovered his consciousness. I began to realize that we were the center of attention that this was a big event. And the next morning, they, they brought us back to the hospital. And immediately I noticed there were yellow roses there that had been sent by President and Mrs. Johnson. Thousands of people gathered in various cities, Washington, Chicago, New York, Boston, San Francisco. Uh, it was headlines all across the country about the attack on this white clergy. But the whole voting rights march, that is the march from Selma to Montgomery, was originally organized to honor Jimmy Lee Jackson, a young black man who had been killed by a state trooper. But there wasn't much attention paid to Jimmy Lee Jackson by the broader American public, nor by the president. I learned years later that in reference to Jimmy Lee Jackson's death, President Johnson had not one telephone call. He didn't initiate one, didn't receive one. In reference to the attack on Jim Reeb and his death and so on, Johnson had 57 phone calls. This minister's gonna die, isn't he? Yes, sir. What time do you think he'll die? They tell me that he could stay alive uh, for another uh, 24 or 36 hours. 57 phone calls. It has struck me that that's an extraordinary number, no matter what the... No matter what the situation might be, 57 phone calls.
I believe that Johnson was moved by the attack on us and by Jim Reeb's death. The president realized that this was the moment to urge passage of the voting rights bill. And in his speech, and he said something to the effect that there are times in history that are special moments in man's unending quest for justice and freedom. So it was last week in Selma, Alabama. There, long-suffering men and women peacefully protested the denial of their rights as Americans. Many were brutally assaulted. One good man, a man of God, was killed. So he made specific reference to Jim Reeb, whose hand I'd held when he went unconscious. Really, it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. I'm past 80 years old now. This happened to me when I was 33 years old. The gift to me in my later years, and having been part of this, it's an enormous gift to me. Part of, not all, but part of the meaning of my life 